So a while back I told you what my favorite Matchbox were. And I showed you my top, my number one car, and my number two car. All time favorites told you why. Um, in the live stream for uh, November, I showed you my all time favorite Lesney Matchbox, but it wasn't a car. And at the time I promised you that I would come back and do a show on my all time favorite Lesney Matchbox car. So we're going to do that today. Don't go away. Hey gang, it's Paul from Fat Guy Productions coming to you as always from beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. And yes, indeed, I'm going to show you and we're going to restore my all-time favorite Lesney Matchbox. All right, now I told you in my live stream for November that my all-time favorite Lesney Matchbox of any kind was this little guy right here. The Honda Motorcycle. I can't tell you how many miles I must have put on this motorcycle. I really love this thing. But it's not a car. And, you know, I did the Hot Wheels top two, okay? And so technically this is going to be the top two, but it's also going to be the top one because it's the only car in the group. And we're going to restore and take a look at the Leslie Matchbox Jaguar. Let's get right to it. Okay, so today we're going to be working on my all-time favorite Lesney Matchbox, the E-Type Jaguar. I loved this car when I was a kid, and this particular car was clearly loved by some other kid. Uh, and he gave it his own custom touch. And you know how I feel about kid paint jobs. I love to pay homage to uh, what the kid was trying to, to capture. And so we're going to see what we can do with this one today, even though it's really ugly as sin. But uh, generally speaking, the body's solid, the base, the wheels, the, all of that is good. The glass looks like crap, but I think I can save it. And uh, I'm taking cautious note of this paint job, and I'm going to try and figure out something I can do with that to uh, kind of keep this uh, the way the kid saw it. But uh, it all begins, of course, by taking the car apart for that. Uh, the matchboxes already have a great dimple, so I can just use a regular drill bit to drill off the, uh, the mushroomed end of the post, and then we'll get this car apart. Okay, so after drilling off the post, we'll use a little uh, uh, flathead screwdriver to help pry it apart. I'm very judicious on how much I remove from the post. Uh, I want as much material left uh, when I'm done so I have something to work with when I'm putting this thing back together. But once we get that satisfying click, the base will come off. And we can see that the base is in perfect condition, just needs to be stripped and repainted. Uh, the wheels and, and axles and all that are going to work just fine. So we can put that off to the side. And now we can pop out the interior. It's just real plain Jane. Maybe we can do something about that. And then we can take a look at this glass and see what's going on with it. It's almost like maybe they put like... A, I want to say like clear fingernail polish or something on it. It looks like hell. And the only thing I can think of to do with that is we're going to have to sand that down. Now here's the body with that, that great purple and red paint job. And I actually kind of like the dual racing stripes on it. But I'm not so sure, even though they're complementary colors, how well that purple and red uh, work. So I'm really going to struggle with that. But be that as it may, it's got to come off, so into the warm liquid goo phase it will go. So why is this my favorite uh, Matchbox car ever? Well, I remember when I got it, it was at Christmas, and my grandmother had actually bought me, uh, you know, a whole gaggle of, of Matchboxes, and she taped all the boxes together and wrapped it as one, so... Try as I might, I could not figure out what was in this package. But once I ripped it open, I, I had all these Matchbox cars. And man, what a great thing this was. This was really super for me. And in that batch was one of these Jaguars. And it just became my favorite car out of out of that gift. Um, I was just uh, entranced by the, the kind of the smooth and rounded edges. And yet it still got this 
this feeling of speed. I, I just really loved it. So uh, it, it became my favorite of all time, and I'm really excited to be doing one here. So uh, let's go ahead and move on. What we've done now is we've gone ahead and gotten it out of the stripper, and we washed it off. Uh, we're not going to be doing a transparent paint of any kind. We're going to be using opaque colors. So uh, we can just uh, hit this with the wire brush, smooth it down, pick away any uh, residual paint, and then we can uh, head over to the paint booth. Okay, so my original thought was to take this kid paint car and do it the exact same way uh, that the kid had it. I was going to do the... Uh, uh, purple with the dual red stripes. Uh, what I was going to do, though, is I was going to make that purple a really deep purple. Uh, I thought that would go better against the two red stripes. So uh, I do have a plan on how I'm going to uh, keep the feel of the kid paint job on there. And uh, the car's looking pretty good. I'm, I'm real happy with it. So we can move forward. Okay, so after a coating of Tamiya Fine Primer, uh, I'm at the paint booth, and I'm going to just use some gloss red uh, Tamiya paint, and I'm going to give this a nice, beautiful, smooth red paint job. And the idea here is I'll put that down as the base, and after it's dry, I can tape off where the stripes will go, and then I'll paint the purple over the top of the car. So this is going to be the base coat, as to where the stripes, you know, will show through. Uh, with the two-tone paint and everything else that's going on, I do plan on putting a clear coat on this, but it still will behoove me to have as smooth a base coat as I can possibly lay down. So I'm really working this red hard to make sure that it uh, is smooth and flat and shiny. Uh, I use my standard methods of uh, tack coats, some medium coats, and then the wet coats to, to achieve that. And then once we get there, we can go ahead and set this on the lamp to cure because we're going to need it to be really, really solid before we start putting tape on it. All right, so here it is, and I have to say it looks just amazing. And sadly for me, that is going to cause me a problem. Um, because right now, I think it's just absolutely stunning. So I was so enamored by this paint job that I took it and I had a conversation with my wife. And I explained to her how I felt about how it looked. And it was so beautiful. And I just was having a really hard time with the idea of, of putting that purple on here. And she said, then don't. You kept the red that he had in there, and, you know, you, you, you've you also got a goal to try and make it beautiful, and you're right, it is beautiful. It's so shiny and glossy and spectacular, and that red just pops. Uh, I, I would leave it like it is. So I made the hard decision and decided that it, that was the right thing to do, and I threw out the plans of adding the purple and the stripes, and the car is now just going to be this beautiful, beautiful, sexy red. So my brain must have taken a trip to the Bahamas and I made a critical mistake and forgot to drill out the posts on this car uh, before going to paint. Um, I've been really good about that lately and it was a crux of mine from uh, early on in doing these videos and I've worked very hard to stop doing that but I, I screwed it up here. So now I'm having to drill out the posts with this brand new beautiful paint job on it. So I'm trying to be really, really careful. I've got a glove on, uh, and I'm getting the post drilled out. You know, no matter what, I've got to forge forward and get this done. But, man, this is a prime example. I've got the most spectacular paint job in the world on this thing. And uh, now I'm having to drill the post, and damned if I didn't mess up the paint job. Okay, look right here, and you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. If you look on the roof, see those marks on the roof from the towel? Okay, I've got those. And then if you look here on the front of the hood, you got a couple little divots and, and a few marks. Um, <clears throat> so at this point, I'm really, really bummed out. Uh, it, it's my own stupid fault, but I'm super, super bummed because the paint was just absolutely spectacular. 
So now I've got to just pause, take a big deep breath and figure out what to do. So while I gave the paint job a thought, uh, I decided I could go ahead and move forward and at least go ahead and finish getting these posts ready. So here I am using that amazing tap handle from Bright Vision and uh, I'm getting the posts tapped out and I'm going to finish that up. I, I might as well, after all, I, I did that crap to my paint job. Uh, I might as well at least get the posts done out of it. So I've got the Bright Vision tap handle and... Uh, we're just going to go ahead and tap these posts out and get them ready so that we can put the car back together. Okay, so I took a little bit of a polishing cloth and I kind of uh, polished around where uh, the marks had been. And as you can see, they're really, really hard to see now. They're almost completely gone. And so that has me thinking about something that I learned a while back. Um, if I take this and put it back on my lamp, my little curing lamp, um, this paint will soften just enough that sometimes it will help hide little minor blemishes. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and take this, uh, you know, you can barely see it as it is, and I'm going to give it a shot. I'm going to put it on the, the heating lamp for about 45 minutes and see what I come up with. Okay, so after the time on the heating lamp, I got it back out, and the roof looks perfect, and the hood just has the slightest dimple in it. And I, I'd call this 99.5% uh, of what it was before the mishap. And so I, I figure I have a much better chance of screwing it up by redoing it than just leaving it alone. So I'm going to live with that 0.5% and I'm going to keep it the way it is because I think it looks spectacular again. And uh, I'm, I'm so happy I was able to kind of get, get a save on this one. Okay, so after some time in super clean, uh, the tires and wheels are, are ready to go. And these spoke wheels are going to get uh, a little bit of a treatment from uh, my Molotow Chrome pen. Then I'm going to actually flip the good side over on a toothpick because I don't want to be messing with it. I'm going to push the tire onto the wheel uh, from the back side. The goal here is I'm trying to avoid uh, impacting the Molotow on the front side so that the, the spoke wheels will be as shiny as I can get them. So it's just that easy, and now I can take it off, and here I have a beautiful... Uh, cleaned tire on a beautiful glossy shiny uh, spoked wheel and I've done that to all four and so those are good to go. Now the axles seemed really really short to me when I took them off the car to begin with so I've dug through my uh, my box and found a bunch of different uh, axles. Uh, I actually tried making some out of a uh, uh, the rivets, but as you can see, those did not fit through the hole. Um, so I'm going to end up using uh, just a different pair of axles from some other project I had that are just a hair longer and will give me a little bit more room to uh, uh, round over the ends over on my drill press. All right, so while I have a little time here, let's go ahead and turn our attention to the interior and I'm going to leave it pretty much that kind of a lighter cream color, uh, but I'm going to use a little bit of a darker cream color to uh, paint the seats, and then a little bit of black for the pedals and the steering wheel, uh, and that should be about it. So after stripping and priming, the base was given a coat of Tamiya semi-gloss black and allowed to thoroughly dry. Uh, so we've got that over here now. We've got the wheels, the interior. Uh, now I just need to kind of sort through the little selection of axles and, and settle on the ones that I think are going to work the best here. So we'll pick a couple axles out, make sure everything fits right. Then we can take the car downstairs to the press and use Marnie's method to uh, round over the end of the axle and lock all that back up together. 
Okay, we've got the body, uh, and now we're inviting the, the window, which uh, we did a lot of work on. What we did is we sanded that down with a, uh, a fairly aggressive grit. I think it was uh, like a 500 grit sandpaper because there was so much crud on it. So we sanded that down with 500, then we went to a, a thousand and then 2000, then we used a polishing compound on it. And after that, we washed it really well. And then finally we dipped it in gauzy and it's looking pretty good if I do say so myself. So we're getting the car ready to go back together. We've got the glass set back in there. And now we're just figuring out how to get this interior in there and keep that steering wheel folded up where it belongs because it wants to keep popping out. Uh, but once we've got that, we'll be able to put the base on. Okay, so we've got everything kind of placed together and we're going to screw it shut. And that's when I realized that uh, I had drilled the posts out using my 172 uh, tap and uh, was planning on using the 172 screws. But the holes in the base of this thing are ginormous. And even if I had uh, tried to use the 256, it still wasn't going to work. So I ended up having to use washers. Um, it's something I very, very seldom use. Um, but uh, I had uh, washers for the uh, 172 screws. So I grabbed a couple of those, put one on each end, and got this car put back together. So the last decision to make was whether I was going to paint a bunch of details on here. And in uh, reference to uh, the original car, and my feelings about the way this red paint looks, I've decided I'm not going to put any details on here. I'm not going to paint in those headlights or anything. This is how it's going to be, and I hope you love it. All right, there you have it, the Leslie Matchbox Jaguar. And, you know, I'm, I'm just entranced with this thing. The, the gloss on this red is spectacular, and the chrome-spoked wheels. Uh, I just love the way this thing came out. Uh, it was a favorite because it was a real car, it was a cool car, and it was just a lot of fun to play with. And it is right back at the top of the pile again, with, as, with this beautiful, beautiful red on here. Came out so good. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Click subscribe, click the little bell, and you'll be notified anytime I release a new video. If you have any questions or comments, as always, you can leave them down below, and I'll do my best to talk with you and, you know, address any questions you might have. All right, this is Paul from Fat Guy Productions. I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. Until next time, I hope you have a day that brings back a lot of great, fond memories, uh, you know, of, of a day gone by when you had a lot of fun and the things that you loved. I hope it's just a really special day for you. Okay, this is Paul from Fat Guy Productions. Until next time, be good.